Hey everybody. Alright, so we are sitting in my 2006 Honda Ridgeline and I want to illustrate the process on how to actually uh, remove this aftermarket radio. Um, I looked around on YouTube and there's a couple of videos that uh, show you how to remove the radio, um, but none that really actually sh like show how it's done. They just kind of explain a couple of things and then you don't see anything. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and show you how you actually get to this radio and how you remove the main panel. Um, and then I'm also going to show you, I got a couple of goodies here to go along with this radio. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn it on. This is actually a really cool head unit. Um, I had just the standard six disc CD changer that comes with the car, uh, but you know, having an iPhone and, you know, wanting to listen to YouTube videos or watch YouTube or Netflix or whatever when I'm parked, um, you know, kind of had some, you know, the other radio kind of had some limitations. I kind of wanted to get up with the 21st century here. So, uh, I went on ahead and I purchased this Pioneer head unit. Uh, this is the AVHX 3500 BHS, which is a big mouthful. Um, but basically it's, it's really cool. It's got Bluetooth audio, which is awesome. I can basically stream my iPhones, any audio coming from my iPhone right into my car speakers without having to do anything but install this. So that's one really cool thing. It's, it does have the HD radio, of course. There's no antenna uh, capability for it right now because you have to have a antenna adapter, which I'm gonna show you in my video also how to do. Um, but it's just really cool. I mean, <clears throat> if you get the right cable for it, you can actually play video right from your phone to the actual uh, head unit, which is a nice thing. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Uh, some of the limitations that come with this are, when you hook it up just the way it is, uh, the only additional part that was required is the actual radio wiring harness, which I was able to pick up at Walmart for about 10 bucks, and it's uh, any standard Honda wiring harness. But what you wanna do uh, first here is, let me go ahead and uh, switch this off so I don't play any audio through my channel. So that would be bad. Okay. Um, what you do, what you first thing you need to do is purchase a steering wheel control. Uh, one of the problems with installing this radio was I lost the functionality on my steering wheel. So now none of the volume buttons work, none of this, none of this stuff over here works, which I really like to use. I mean, it's, it's a convenience thing, but you know, kind of sucks that you lose that functionality when you upgrade. So uh, supposedly, uh, what is this? The AW or ASWC interface uh, by Axis. This is supposed to handle uh, bridging the compatibility between the steering wheel control and the head unit. So that's the first thing we're going to go ahead and do. Next thing I lost was my, even though that this is Sirius ready, which you can see right here, it is Sirius uh, XM ready. It does not come with a Sirius tuner. Um, <clears throat> Previously, I had Sirius in the truck, and I was using the Han SC1 and the SCC1 modules. Uh, those are not compatible with this unit because the plug is actually different. So you have to go to Pioneer or Amazon and pick up the V200 uh, vehicle connect tuner for Sirius XM and install this. So this is also going to happen. And then the third thing I'm going to do today is so I can have radio again because this doesn't have the traditional uh, radio plug. I'm gonna have to go on and install this. Uh, it's a Honda vehicle antenna adapter cable. So this is actually going to plug into my antenna right here and then this part right here is going to go into the back of the receiver. So there's a couple of things that we're gonna do. So the first thing, first order of business here is to remove this dash shroud or main dash panel piece. So you can get a fancy dashboard puller uh, tool or you can just be handy and grab a butter knife which will be fine. Uh, just watch the serrations and you're gonna go ahead and insert it in the dash. You're gonna feel a little groove here. It's gonna be like a little notch that's cut out and just kind of slide the butter knife in there a little bit and you're gonna pry ever so gently and it's gonna release. <clears throat> now this is held in with small little clips, so what I'm going to do for right now is turn the key off, take the key out so there's no power going to these switches. I know you're supposed to disconnect the battery. Let's just say for practice purposes, when you're going to do this, disconnect your battery. I've done this a few times, so I don't. I, nothing's going to happen. So what I do is I start to put my fingers back here, 
around the back of the panel and I just slowly pull and working your way around and it'll slowly release and all I'm doing is I'm just moving my hand through here and I'm pulling nice and gently okay now we have this basically loose so you can't just rip it off the car so the next thing you want to do stick your key in the ignition and this is an important step trust me turn your key to on put your foot on the brake put it into third gear get the shifter out of the way okay now you get to listen to the annoying beep I have this loose already so we can start working with it so what we're gonna do now is every one of these plugs are still plugged in in the back so this is the fun part of just basically going back and feeling her. Uh -oh. the turn it on. Um, you want to go back here and start feeling your connectors. And start popping them loose. And this is going to be really fun to do with the camera in my hand. I may have to start the video back up. And we'll see. See how bad this is. set the camera down this is going to be a little more challenging than I thought I'm trying to be gentle here I'm not going to be rough I'm going to slowly pull and you'll feel the little tabs push in on the plug this is for the air conditioner controller that'll pop out next thing you want to do you got your door switch on off door switch that one will come out and we're clear to this point here now you got your 4x4 switch that's gonna come out you got your select switch for your odometer that one's gonna pop out then over here I don't know if you can see this but I'm on my dimmer switch that's gonna come out cargo lamp out headlight switch out okay that should be all the switches so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna slowly work this up and move it out of the way so we're safe it's not gonna get scratched up like right there <laughs> okay and you can see on the back here that's what we were disconnecting there's the air conditioner and there's all your little plugs so just keep this in a nice safe spot on the passenger side and this is what you're gonna see next all the wiring <clears throat> all the good stuff and my phone's ringing well that's pretty cool too it'll actually uh, show the phone so let me grab this call and I'll pick this right back up in a minute okay here I am back sorry about that that was the lady um now this part's pretty simple. I mean, obviously, you can just tell by looking at what we got to do here. We got some screws that have to come out. So we have one, two, three, four, and five for the tray. So let's start working on those now. And if you're wondering, this is a dash install kit that I got off of crutchfield.com, which. <clears throat> in my opinion is is pretty the fit and finish is is pretty cool once you modify it um and i will give you a word of caution that the main plastic that the um setup is made of is black so that means that this plastic that's on here is actually painted so what that tells you is to be very careful around the face of it not to scratch it. Now it's not going to just come off with your fingernail but it is a matte finish and it will scratch so I would definitely caution you also on the types of cleaners that you use on your dashboard if you use armor on stuff like that I'm pretty sure it'll it'll wear it off after a while so alright there's the last screw pull that out of there and now this should be loose so let me go ahead and set the camera down again and if i had a cameraman this definitely would be easier but i don't so deal with it 
All right, so what we're gonna do now, slowly lift this out of place. And it's going to reveal a mess of wires that I have already done here. It's a shrink wrapped. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this plug out here. Carefully. And the switch plug over here for our hazards has to come off. A little maneuverability here. This isn't something you just rush through and do because you're going to rip switches out and you're going to be calling Honda asking them for forgiveness. <clears throat> All right, so there's the deck, head unit, whatever you want to call it these days. All right. Now, set that down over here. All righty. So this is going to give you a nice little look inside the dash. So basically all we got here is the, this is the wiring harness I picked up at Walmart, hooked into the harness that comes with the radio, and then here's our factory connection, which is the blue one. The rest of these, for the most part, are being ignored, but you can assume that one's probably steering wheel controls, this is the antenna, so those are features that we can't use right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I may make this a two-part series, I'm not sure. But uh, next stages are gonna be installing all these goodies to make the entire system work the way it should. Thanks for watching.